Good evening. Please stand. Come, let us worship God and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. As we begin Mass for the fifth Sunday in ordinary time, let us together lift our voices as by singing glory and praise to our God. Good evening, sisters and brothers. Good evening, Father. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind those times in which we have sinned. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Do you? 
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I rise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. This is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as to not make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told her, told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. Job asks us today, is that man's life on earth a drudgery? Yes, we know that in the end, he received so many gifts from God because his faith did not fail him. In today's readings, we are given an inner, the inner senses of three different people and the relationships to what the Father has asked them to do. Job speaks before knowing anything of salvation given to us in Christ Jesus. Jesus speaks to us of his inner calling to proclaim the good news. St. Paul then tells us how to proclaim that good news. But let's get back to Job. Most of us may have known the story of Job. He was a man who believed completely in the Lord and had received enormous blessings. The dev devil tries to undo that faith of Job while questioning what is happening. He never doubts or loses faith. It's kind of what's happening now. We ask God, why God, is there so much suffering in my life, in the country, and in the world with this pandemic? It's still here, almost a year. Some are vaccinated, some not, some recover, and some do not. We can ask questions. There is nothing wrong with that. Job asked God, why me? Why is there suffering and acknowledged that what we think about suffering? Whether you may think, let God know he can handle it. So can we, physically and spiritually. Job says, my life is like the wind. 
He's not talking about those great storms we've just passed through. He's talking about life's breath in all of us, the one that God has given to all of us. We may feel like we are blown around and praying for a better tomorrow. Job teaches us it is okay for us to do this, to feel and think. He also teaches us hope in the most hopeless of times. When we admit to all what we feel and think, we come to that place of belief. Who do I believe in? It is belief that leads us to hope. In the midst of a pandemic, it's belief that brings us to find happiness in the midst of chaos. Our honesty and feelings and thoughts in relationship and prayer with God brings us happiness. Only if we believe. So, my sisters and brothers, do we all believe? God bless. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came, he came down, down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate the Virgin Mary, Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again, again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the door and the of life, who has spoken to the prophets. Believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we offer you this evening. prayer for the church, that by preaching the gospel in word and deed, may many may come to be saved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those called to a leadership in the world, that they work diligently to raise people from slavery in all forms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the infirm and those who have lost hope that they be comforted and strengthened by God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For life to be respected in all forms, from conception to death and every moment in between. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the emergency and medical personnel doing the jobs on the front line of society to be protected from harm and that their resolve be strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayer requests received by our parish's ministry of prayer to be heard and answered according to God's holy will, we pause now to remember our own personal intentions in the silence of our hearts.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in Christ to rest in the peace of our Lord, including Patrick Capice, Anthony Swalla, and we pray especially for our Mass intention, Gail A. Bowles. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we offer you this day and grant them at your will. Through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As the gifts are being prepared at the altar, oh, sorry. our hymn will be, Lord, you have come. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the hands, the prayers and glory of his name, for our good and good of all in his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and this evening we remember Gail A. Boltz, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. takes away the sins of the world, the blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men. For he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things. Our communion hymn will be, O oh Lord, I am not worthy. spiritual communion, 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. The first thing that you're going to notice, as I did the opening collect or the opening prayer earlier in the Mass, when we close out that prayer, the words are, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. You're going to notice now a change where the one is going to be eliminated, and that has come from the people that sit in, in high offices in the Vatican. So you'll notice, um, effective on Ash Wednesday, and I'm going to try to begin doing it now to get in the habit, You'll notice it will end in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. So those of you that follow along and know the wording will notice that there's going to be that slight little change in verbiage in, the, in that prayer. And that'll be the, the call-up prayer for every Mass that we do. Just a reminder, uh, folks, I know it's winter, I know it's cold outside, on the weekends, the doors will not open much before 20 minutes before Mass time. So please, if it's cold out, either come a little bit close to the Mass time or sit in your car until we get close to the Mass time. I, we will not open the doors much more before 20 minutes before the start of Mass. And also on that note, you know, our ushers come out here every weekend and they don't have to, but they do out of the goodness of their hearts and they come to help us uh, greet people and to see people and most importantly to keep each and one of us safe from COVID. We and they are following the rules that have been set forth by the Diocese of Scranton, the Bishop and the Bishop's Advisory Board and they follow the CDC recommendations and that includes the seating of six feet apart and it includes the fact that if you do not live in the same household you are to be separated by six feet in the pews. So I just ask everybody to please respect the rules that the bishop has set forth. They are not my rules. They are not Father Nash's rules. These are the rules of the bishop. And please don't give our ushers a hard time about it. They come out here every week in the goodness of their hearts. And they don't have to do that. And we are ever so thankful to all of them that come out here week after week since June when we were able to reopen to help keep each and every one of us safe and COVID-free. So to the ushers, I say thank you for your service to this church. It is greatly appreciated. <laughs> and finally, on the last note, my friends, if you want to ever realize or look and see if there truly is a tree shortage in the Diocese of Scranton, you can look at me this week and next week because to be honest with you, there is a shortage of priests in the Diocese of Scranton. I am running back and forth daily to Hazleton to help out in Hazleton because of a shortage of priests there. So I'm doing my duties here and I'm running in Mount Carmel, but I'm also running back and forth to Hazleton every day. So if you ever wondered if there truly is a priest shortage, I can vouch for it. Yes, there is. So please pray for vocations to the priesthood as well. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. It's supposed to snow again tomorrow. Surprise, surprise. I mean, we haven't had any in quite a while, so um, I think we're deprived of snow. So it's gonna snow tomorrow, so please be safe. Uh, good day to stay home. Uh, maybe I think there's a football game on uh, tomorrow night. I'm not quite sure. There might be. Um, go Kansas City. Um, but anyhow, on that note, 
uh, just continue to be safe, wear your mask, social distance, so we can get through this pandemic together. And I would love to be able to return uh, to normal times. And I'm waiting for the day when I can actually stand here and look out and see everybody's smiling face and not their masked face. Because I can never tell if you're smiling or frowning or want to throw me out the door. So, <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with you, May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go remembering what we can learn from John and believing in God. Thanks be to God. As we go forth to carry on the mission of the fruits of this Mass, please join in Holy God, we praise thy name.